of praise and thank him for his goodness. Oh, oh we give you praise today, Lord. God bless each and every person.
somebody you just need to call on the name of Jesus right now. I feel his presence in this building sweeping across this congregation. to us. Come on, he's worthy today.
Let's just speak the name of Jesus into this atmosphere. You just whisper the name of Jesus and all of heaven stands at attention. And I go one better when you speak the name of Jesus. Your adversary begins to tremble. And not just your adversary, but all of hell begins to tremble when you just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You've been fighting hell too long. You need to cry out, Jesus. Can we seek his face for just a moment? There's an undercurrent in the atmosphere right now, and the Spirit of the Lord is about to move in your behalf. I'm going to preach for just a minute because I feel a release in the Holy Ghost to do so. But I'm not going to preach long because God's going to do something in this room. I said God's going to do something in this room. If you have come here today with a need, if you have come here today with questions, if you have come here today looking for a mountain to be moved, if you have come here today in the midst of a storm, God's going to move in your behalf this day, this moment. God is going to meet you where you are. The 
word of the Lord says in the book of Matthew, this eighth chapter, in verse number 23, and he was entered into a ship. His disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came unto him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, for we perish. The same story is recorded in the book of Mark, the fourth chapter, starting at verse number 35. In the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. We're going somewhere, boys. Get in the boat. And when, he, when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with them other little ships. And when they... And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat unto the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And I'm only going to speak for a moment, but I'm going to talk to you about God's way. God's way. Can we pray one more time? Father, I thank you so much for the anointing that I feel flowing in this room. I pray, God, that my words would be few, that yours might be many. Let us, oh God, have ears to hear and hearts to receive your word. And I ask in the name of Jesus that you would baptize this congregation with apostolic boldness and apostolic authority. God, that we would step into what you would have for us. In the name of Jesus, if you're ready to receive the word, I want you to say amen and be seated. Has anybody ever been promised something of God? Has anybody ever been told something by God? The way God works with me may be a little bit different than everybody else, but I'm very much of an imagination person. I'm very much of a visual person. And the way that God speaks to me is through my imagination. It's through my vision, if you want to call it. Uh, it's through my dreams, whatever you want to call it. I, I like to say dreams because I believe the young men dream dreams. And I don't want to be an old man yet. I'm rapidly approaching. But God, God has a way of showing us where we're going. He told his disciples, get in the boat, we're going to the other side. The one thing he didn't tell them is how we're going to get there. The one thing he doesn't tell us is how we're going to get there. And that's either the best or the worst part. Because we either sit around worrying and fretting about how we're going to get from A to B... Or God shows us how we're going to get there and we take a step back and say, oh no, I don't want to go through that. Oh no, I, I don't want it to cost me that. We find ourselves in this story. Lexi's little love note, sorry. We find ourselves in this story and God tells his disciples to get in the boat. We're going to the other side. He doesn't tell them how they're going to get there. He doesn't tell them how long it's going to take. Uh, but these are experienced uh, fishermen. They are experienced men on the water. They have fished these seas probably from the time that they could walk. Uh, they were bred to take on these seas. They, they have the know-how. They have the experience. Uh, it wasn't as if they just got into something new and then they're just like blindly trying to get to the other side. They knew how to get there. They knew how to get there. But Jesus left a few things out. And we find ourselves, these men find themselves in a great tempest. Uh, I looked that word up. I was trying to see if it had any significant meaning. It really doesn't. The tempest is just a large storm that would happen. It's actually uh, in, uh, Paul writes about it when he gets shipwrecked. And he uses a word. Uh, I didn't write it down. And I'm probably going to mess it up. So I'll leave it alone. But if you look that up in Temptus, it just it means a storm in that region, to so the Mediterranean Sea, uh, where they would have been at that time. And they find themselves in the middle of the fight. And again, these are experienced men. There's nothing new to them to experience a storm on the Mediterranean Sea. I've heard a lot of people talk about it and they say that the winds can change on that sea in a moment and you will find yourselves in these great storms, these great windstorms, and they catch you by surprise. Now I imagine that it still caught them by surprise, but they probably said, okay boys, batten down the hatches. 
It's time to wrestle the waves. They probably had an expectation of how they're going to navigate their way through this. They probably had a plan as to what to do. You're going to take this post and you're going to take that post and, and you're going to take the helm and, and you're going to hold on to that rope and you're going to pull the sail when I say ready and we need some guys on the oars to help us steer a little bit. They had a plan. They had, they had what they thought was a way through the situation. And how many times in life do we encounter things and we make a plan? And we say, okay, God, I think I know how to get through this. And we map it out. Maybe some of you don't, but I like to. I like to make a plan. I like to have a point of purpose of how I'm going to handle this, of how I'm going to get through this. I can see the other side, but I want to know the road so I can navigate my way around the waves. And I can navigate my way around the speed bumps. And here they are, and they're fighting like they normally do. And all of a sudden, Brother John, the waves get bigger, and the storm gets stronger. And before you know it, the Bible says that the ship was full. Full of water, I would imagine. Full of a, a gunk from the sea. Full of the winds and the waves. Uh, and, and before you know it, they find themselves in a situation that they have never experienced before. They're facing a near-death experience. And they're saying, boys, if we don't dig down deep, this storm is probably going to rip this boat apart and we're going to end up shipwrecked somewhere. And then they probably remembered at some point that, oh yeah, Jesus is on this boat. We don't have to fight this alone because Jesus is on this boat. And I can just imagine if you read the... Uh, of the, the passage of scripture in the book of Mark where they finally get to Jesus and they say, care us not that we perish. They're upset with him. They're probably agitated with him. And, and God likes to put pictures in my mind and paint things uh, in my mind. And, and so I imagine it going this way a little bit. They're up there and, and the waves are blowing and, 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 and things are starting to get a little bit rough and maybe somebody's getting a little bit worried and, and, and they're voicing their opinion like, I don't know about this, Peter. That wave looks pretty high. I, I don't know about this, John. The, those, 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 those winds are, are, are blowing this sail. I don't know how much longer I can hang on to it. And I can just imagine that they're thinking in their mind, you know, if, if Jesus was up here, if, if God was up here with me and God was fighting for me and fighting with me, we probably could make it through this storm. I don't know. Maybe you got one of those people in your family when things get a little bit uh, chaotic and, and they, uh, I believe it's called passive aggressive. I didn't hear any amen, so I praise the Lord. But they're up there on the, on the, on the, the, the top of the boat and they're fighting this storm. And I could just imagine that they're, they're hollering down below. Okay, boys, here comes the big one. I said, here comes the big one. Hold on for dear life. No, he's not stirring yet. Okay, so we're going to hold down this rope. Here comes the waves. Oh, it's knocking me over. I've fallen. And they're trying to get the attention of the master. And they're trying to get the attention of God. And they're trying to stir him up from the place that he's at. All while trying to do it their own way. All while having a mindset that if Jesus would just get on board with us and come up here and hold the rope and help us fight this wind, if Jesus would just grab a hold of the oar, if Jesus would just grab a hold of the helm, he could help steer this boat through this mess that we're in. But I find in this story that God had a different plan. I find in this story that God had a different idea. You see, when they got down to Jesus and they said, God, don't you care that we perish? Don't you care that we're about to be shipwrecked? Don't you care that this boat is about to be ripped apart from the bow into the stern? And Jesus says, how come you don't have any faith? I'm not here to fight your storm. I own this storm. I'm not here to fight your storm for you, but I'm going to step out on the bow of your life and I'm going to say, peace, be still. And I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Oh, yeah. We find ourselves too many times, Brother John, trying to make it our own way. 
We find ourselves too many times just trying to fight through it. We find ourselves too many times just trying to grit our teeth and bear it. And we find ourselves in all kinds of mess. And we're just wondering where Jesus is. We're just wondering when God's going to show up and help us fight this storm. But I find that these disciples, they got it in themselves that they could not stir Jesus from where they were. They could not stir the master trying to do it their way. And I find that they went down into the belly of the ship. They went away from the noise of the waves. And they went away from the noise of the wind. And they had themselves a come to Jesus meeting. And some of you are going through life and the storms are raging and the winds are blowing and the waves are crashing. And what you need to do is get away from the noise and find yourself in a come to Jesus meeting. They went down in the belly of that ship and they didn't just say, okay, God, we give up. But they were angry. They were upset. They're trying to figure out why he wants us to die. And they poured out of themselves their feelings, their thoughts, and what their frustrations were. And they said, God, don't you care about us? God, don't you care that we're going to die? God, don't you care that we've never been through this before? Don't you care that I'm not experienced enough to make it through this? Don't you care, God, that I can't bear this? Don't you care, God, you, you said you would never give me more than I can handle? But the weight is too much, God. The weight is too heavy, God. The load is just too much, God. And I don't know if you've ever found yourself in a come-to-Jesus meeting, but I have them. All the time. And I can assure you as I stand here that I speak the same way to Jesus that I do to you. Honest, blunt, and truthful. And I tell God how I'm feeling. And I've heard people say, you know, you probably ought to not do that. But let me just tell you how I feel about it. When I pour out of my heart and I empty my heart and I empty of myself. I have just made room for his way. And I have just made room for his word. And I have just made room for his plan. And I empty out myself on the altar. And I empty myself out before the master. And I say, God, I can't make this. I can't carry it. I can't get through this. And God says, though you're weak, I am made strong. Though you think you're not able, I have never given you more than you can carry. Though you think you can't make it, I want you to know that I'm still in charge. I'm still on the throne. I don't care what the doctors say God is still in charge I don't care what anybody else says God is still in charge I don't care how much hell comes against you God is still in charge he's still on the throne there's nobody beside him there's nobody behind him there's nobody before him it's just God and God alone and he's in control of your storm hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. And you need to find yourself in a come to Jesus meeting where you just lay it all out before the master. Because what's going to happen, Brother John, when we empty of ourselves, God's going to make a way. I believe, I believe, and you call me crazy, whatever you want, but I believe that the only intention of that storm was to bring them to a near-death experience. I believe that because it was at that moment when they realized that they could not do it by their own hands and they could not do it their own way, they realized that they needed a savior. They needed a master. They needed the God of the storm. They, they, it was in that moment that they realized, uh, I need Jesus. And I believe that the only intent of that storm was that so God could show them that they can depend upon him in their darkest hour. That God would show them that they can depend upon him when you put your baby on the life flight down to Boston. That God would show you that you can depend upon him when you send your wife to Florida that God showed them that you can depend upon him when you get a bad report from the doctor that God's showing you that you can depend upon him when the bank says no and they come knocking on the door that God shows you that you can depend upon him in your darkest hour let's stand Yeah. <sighs>
I'm going to open these altars in just a moment. And I, um, you know what? You do whatever you want. You can come to the altar. You can build an altar wherever you are. This is what I want you to do. This is what the Holy Ghost told me. I want you to shut out the noise. I want you to shut out the noise of the wind. I want you to shut off the noise of the waves. I want you to shut off the voice of the naysayer that says we're not going to make it through this. And I want you to find yourself in a come to Jesus meeting where you just say, God, here am I. And here's everything I'm facing. Here's everything that I'm struggling with. Here's everything that I'm up against. Here's my frustration. Here's my God, my, my turmoil. Here's the mess that I've got myself in. Oh God, I pour myself out to you right now in this moment and I can tell you that when you begin to stop fighting the waves see God was in charge of the storm they're pulling on that sail trying to go right and the waves are pushing them left and they think oh we're just trying to wrestle our way through this and they, they pull on that thing and they turn the wheel and they try to go left and the storm pushes them back to the right let me tell you, it wasn't by accident that the waves led them to where they were because God was in charge of the storm. God is in charge of your storm. And you better quit fighting the waves because God's trying to steer your boat. God's trying to steer your vessel. And you better quit fighting it because God is still in charge. God is still on the throne. And God has a way through this. And God is a way maker. And he is going to, if you just have a come to Jesus meeting with him, he'll step out on the bow your boat and say peace be still I want you to do whatever wherever you're going to be to pray I want you to get there you're going to bury your face in the pew you're going to come up to this altar uh, wherever you're going to pray I want you to get there right now the Holy Ghost is moving in this house it's not by accident that you're here it's not by accident that you're struggling it's not by accident that you're facing things God's trying to get you somewhere God's trying to get you somewhere. I want you to quit fighting. I want you to let go of the steering wheel. I want you to let go of the ropes that are holding the sail. I want you to throw the oars in the ocean. I want you to let it all go and say, okay, God, my way didn't work. I'm going to try your way. I'm going to try your way. God, here I am. I pour myself out to you. My way is not working. My way only got me so far. God, I want it your way. It's your way, God. Because you are not a God created by human hands. And you are not a God
Oh, stop.